you got kangaroos. I'll show you later. G'day aspiring engineers. In this video, we're gonna be doing top-down assembly. Welcome to Future Engineering. The future starts now. This is the Geneva mechanism that we downloaded in an earlier video from GrabCAD. And uh, this one is in the form of a step file and it's just one part and it's quite useful for what we want to do this week, which is top-down assembly. Last week, you might remember, we assembled this mechanism and it was a bottom-up assembly. It gets that name because it was separate parts that we dragged in and assembled with joints. And you notice this one has four indexing positions on the indexing wheel. This indexing wheel has eight positions, twice as many, and it's got some interesting features to it and it'll be good for us to, uh, to learn a bit about top-down assembly. Top-down means that the assembly method is going to be in context, sometimes called in context design. And you see that it's got a fairly large shaft bore in the middle and it's got a place for a key. But the first thing I'm going to do is close this one down because we don't want to start our assembly with one of the components. So the first thing I'm going to do is save this new document. Let's call it Geneva Mechanism Top-Down Assembly. Notice that the top of the design tree takes on the name of the file. The other thing we need to do straight away is right click and capture the design history. That way we make sure that we get the timeline features appearing along the bottom here. So let's drag in the, our first component. As soon as it arrives in the screen, the move copy command is active and the move copy dialog is open. I don't want to move this at all, so I'll just click OK. Let's take a look at this thing and inspect it. We'll measure a few different parts of this one. The thickness or the depth of the boss is 20 millimeters. The thickness of these indexing features is 10 millimeters, which means that the boss comes up five and also goes down five underneath. The keyway is designed to take a key that's 10 millimeters wide. The diameter of the bore is 30 millimeters. The diameter of the curve that we have on the end of the indexing arms is a radius of 33 or a diameter of 66. That's probably enough to get us started. Let's begin a sketch at the level of the top of the boss here on this plane. Let's put a circle over here with a diameter of 66. It's going to close the data panel for a moment, it gives a bit more space. And let's make this thing concentric. I want a line that goes through here, roughly that long. I want that to be a construction line. I also want the center of the circle to be on the construction line need another circle, a bit bigger than that one, let's say diameter of 90, and a small one, 15. Another circle starting at the point of origin and just touching one of these corners, but this one will want to be a construction line. I want an offset from that one, one millimeter out, and we have a bit of trimming to do. A dimension between the construction line and the offset line will keep that constrained. Now we need one circle for a pin, a diameter of 5, and I want that coincident on the construction line, and I want that to be a distance using the dimension tool from the point of origin of the, the drive wheel, 37 millimetres. Now for the shaft of the indexing wheel, I'll make a circle to one of the corners of the, 
the keyway. And we're going to need to make the keyway so that it's a, a rectangle. Standard sizes for keys are 6 by 10. Hit the tab key to move to the next dimension of the rectangle. You'll see why I'm not going to do any trimming here in a few minutes. Next I'm going to draw an outline of the base of the part. Make sure that we have tangential relationships between curves and straight edges. I want the centre of the circle to be coincident with the construction line. Just make sure that I've got a coincident relationship between the edge. Make sure that this circle is concentric with the shaft of the indexing wheel. D for dimension to put a dimension on the length of the base. And we'll make this 160. And we'll make the base 30 millimetres wide. That's enough for our main sketch. This is a more complicated sketch than what we've done so far. But by now I think you're getting to the place where you can handle them. In order to make another component, I'm going to right click on the top of the assembly tree and click New Component. Double click to give it a name. And when the radio button is pressed, it's activated. I want to use the master sketch that I made earlier. And here it is, it's been switched off. So I'll turn it back on so that I can see it. I'm going to press the E key for the extrude dialog and a home view might help while we're working out this particular extrusion. So the first thing that I need to choose is the profile and I'm going to have to click a few times to get uh, all of the parts of the profile that I want. I don't want to have the hole for the pin of the drive wheel but I do want to have these parts. I do want to have the place where the pin might go because it's not part of the base. I do want this part, I do want the annulus where the boss is, and I do want to have this part of the where the key is, because as you realise, there will be no keyway through the base. That should do it. Now, we've got the profile selected. The direction is one side, but the profile plane is not the place where we're going to start the extrusion. In fact, we're going to use an offset plane. And the offset plane is, well, it's the distance of the the full length of the boss plus another 5 so that's 25 it's not up in the air because it's down below so I need to have that as a negative number notice that the blue arrow is still pointing up I've got the level of the profile plane established but it is going in the other direction so it's going to be a negative number as well and the thickness of this base is going to be 10 millimeters there it is while I'm working on the base, I'm going to give it a fillet on the top surface and the bottom surface, and uh, that'll be two millimeters. Okay. Go back to the top of the assembly tree and activate the top of the assembly. Click somewhere in the window. Now we can see our main sketch and the first couple of components. Now we want to make another component and I can either right click on the top of the assembly and click new component or I can go to the assemble menu and get no new component here which opens a dialog where I can change the name to shaft. I'm not going to select a parent I want it to be activated when it's created and so the rest of it grays out. I'm going to click on the home icon to get a home view, press the E key for the extrude dialog and the profile in this case is that one there, the shaft that the indexing wheel rides on. This extrusion is going to start at the profile plane and go for a distance of minus 35.
back to the top of the assembly tree, activate, click outside. One thing I like to do is activate the component color cycling toggle. And so where we have color coded components in the tree, we also see our parts in the window with the same color coding. Let's make another component, new component. This one is the drive wheel. E for extrude. To begin with, I'm just going to select the shaft of the drive wheel. Starting at the profile plane, going in a negative direction for a distance of minus 35. It's a new body. OK. E for extrude. Here's the profile, plus the two little bits that have been cut off. Starting from not the profile plane, but an offset plane. The offset is at minus 15. Coming up from there for a distance of 10 millimeters. This one has an operation of join. E for extrude. The profile is the rest of the This one's going from an offset plane at minus 15 in a negative direction 10 millimeters deep. This one being a join. Another extrude, this time the little pin, from an offset plane minus 5, that's 5 millimeters down from here, and going in a negative direction 10 millimeters. It's a join. I'm going to go ahead and make a crank quickly the way that I did in the last video where we did bottom up assembly. Basically the same operation so I'll speed up the video while I go. So some of you might be thinking how come this hand crank was made the same way in both videos? The bottom up video and the top down video. And you're quite right. It really is a top down technique that is, modifying a component in the context of an assembly. Really, you're going to be using both approaches interchangeably quite often, when you get used to it, that is. Now, there is a bit of a trap to watch out for for young players, and that is getting your design tree mixed up. That's your browser down the left hand side of the screen there. It's easy to end up with a sketch or a body under the wrong component. You are going to need some patience. Just remember that everybody makes the same mistakes, but you'll get over it eventually. That's the drive wheel. Now we've had the sketch on for long enough. I'm going to turn that off. Let's make the key for the keyway. So we're going to make another new component called key and we'll activate it. In this case we can use the shape that's already there. So we'll start a sketch. We'll choose the top face of the boss. What we need to do is somehow get those edges of the rectangle into our sketch. The way to do that is on the create menu and it's called project. And we'll click on project and we'll choose a few lines. That should do it. I'll finish the sketch, hit the E key for extrude and the profile is the rectangle. We're going to go from the profile plane in a negative direction for just the thickness of the boss which is 20 negative. It's a new body. And there we have our key. Back to the top of the assembly. Activate it. Click in the window. You'll notice that my computer is having a bit of trouble rotating this model and so what I'll do is I'll click on the little house icon which is the home view. And if I want to see any of the other views I can click on the cube 
rotate it using some of the little arrows next to the cube. Or we'll get back to the home view, which is a sort of isometric view. The various components of our assembly are in place and created. So let's see what we can do about moving this. All of these components are free to move. So what we need to do is set up some joints. What I'll do now is revert the position using the revert tool. The first joint we'll do is between the base and the top of the assembly. So bring down the assembly menu and here we have as built joint. We're going to do a rigid joint. We're going to select components. One is the base, the other is the top of the assembly. And we see the animation for the rigid joint. Let's play that again by clicking on the button. And that'll just keep playing over and over again. That's enough of that. We'll OK that. And now these parts can move, but the base can't move. You click and drag and then nothing happens. All the others will move. So let's revert. Now let's put a, a joint between the indexing shaft and the base. Assemble. This is an as-built joint. All we've got to do is select the components. In this case it's going to be the indexing shaft and the base. Oop, we don't want a rigid joint though. What we do want is a revolute joint and it's asking now for the position. Position means it wants to know what is the point of rotation. So I need to click while we've got the, the little indicator showing right in the center of the shaft and we get the animation for the revolute joint. OK. Now we can confirm this by grabbing the, the shaft and moving it around. And if we go back to the home view, we'll see that we do need to revert back to the original position. Now let's put a joint between the shaft and the key. Assemble as built joint, in this case a rigid joint, between the shaft and the key. OK. Let's just confirm that we've got that working. Yep, it works. Revert. Now what I want to do is put a rigid joint between the, the indexing wheel and the shaft. Assemble as built joint. The components are the shaft and the indexing wheel. Let's just test that we've got that one right. Yes, it works. But I will revert back to position. Now for the driving wheel and the base. You can see that the pin of the drive wheel goes into the base here. So what we want is an as-built joint and it's a revolute joint. The components are the hand crank or the drive wheel and the base. It wants to know the position. So I'll mouse to the edge of the hole. It puts the indicator right in the center of the pin. And we see the, uh, the revolute animation. Let's animate that for a moment. It's looking good. And the drive wheel is working. So that's all the joints that we need. As you might remember from the last tutorial, what we need to do now is enable contact sets, which is on the assemble menu. Puts a folder in the tree, back to the assemble menu, and new contact set. It wants to know which of the bodies or components that are going to be in this contact set. I'm going to pick them from the tree. It's the indexing wheel and the drive wheel. OK. That's working. Now there's a feature in Fusion 360. If we open up the joints folder in the tree and find the Revolute joint, which is driven by the hand crank, right click on it and it says Animate Model. The last thing I might do is rename the drive wheel Because this file is linked, I have to rename it in the data panel and then save.